Uh, the blender, the blender, yeah, that was also a really fun building. Um, uh, the blender, yes, in all its, it's glory. Ominous. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> this, so this is from the test level, I think. We have like a scene that we mm. use for testing, and it's just like flat ground with nothing on it, and just like some nodes and a big white wall somewhere. Yeah, I don't know if it's still there or not. But yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, and it look yeah it looks very ominous but the blender yeah it's uh, it was it was uh, pretty interesting because we were very very much uh very much restricted by of course um like every building i i should probably start by explaining that like every building every new factory building that we do has is of course uh has its uh visual foundation in the idea of what recipes does it have? What does it produce? What does it uh, consume? How big is it? How modular should it be? And when you have all these filters already, uh, you can't, you cannot go completely crazy anymore. You have to design something fitting to that. So um, we had this very weird building that ate up solid stuff and fluid stuff and created both fluid and solid um, products. Uh, which was which was really fun to figure out, uh, and by fun I mean partly fun and partly it was a pain in the ass to figure out because what is this thing? Um, and um, we we um, we thought of uh, the, the name was actually pre there pretty early, the blender, because it blends different materials and different resources, and we thought well why the hell not do a blender because um personally i'm a big fan of just using like smaller things that uh no play on like experiences that people have in the real world and taking it over into like those sci-fi fantasy whatever crazy world so uh we thought well let's make it a blender then and um we partly looked into like existing mechanical stuff like giant blender tanks in uh in, in factories smaller home blenders for your kitchen and all that stuff but at the same time we had to look into the size restrictions game design says two inputs two fluid inputs and uh, a fluid output and a solid output so that's already kind of a big building so we did these blockers that you see here and all their glory <laughs> um we usually do that in the editor in unreal and just block out using basic geometric forms and uh just to come up with yeah with the size and essentially the boundaries for the building and it, then it's interesting because you can definitely see the blender there even in the block out it could totally that's the building essentially yeah it's like a uh, silhouette so, yeah, it's yeah. the base. The basis is usually they are using the block out. It's just a reality to check to see is that does that size even make sense? Mm. Um, yeah. And um, is that was that see... block out like playable or was it just for visually uh, testing it? It was just for visual tests. Right. We did it in the editor, and it was just there. It was not a buildable. You could not interact with it. You could not attach anything to it. It was pretty much just. Yeah, just a, a visual blob of yeah. uh, basic geometry. Um, and on that basis, we went to the next phase and thinking, okay, what does it actually do? So we, where are the, because most buildings, we want to have a direction. Where do the re resource inputs go? What does it do? And where is it processed? And where does it come out? So you need to have like a feeling of it goes through direction. Uh, it goes along a path along a production path, so to speak, in a building. So there were these uh, concepts until we finally settled for this one. Um, and you may know that some things are a bit different from the final product because um, the concepts we do are not uh, engineering blueprints. They're concepts, they're art concepts. So the 3D artist fills in any gaps or corrects any uh, rough edges along the way in the model. And we also look along the way of the 3D production, we see we have uh, we have certain stages where we see, does this still make sense? And do every once in a while do like reality checks, do have like these stage gates, uh, there's someone sometimes called like in projects where you say, okay, this is cool. We all agree this is cool. Let's keep going. 
um, so we don't end up having like a final product and say, nah, maybe not. Let's start from the concept phase again, because that will eat, would eat up way too much of our time. Um, and then the next stage after that was to, well, we need cool animations. So how does everything get proce processed? Um, and especially in that building, we decided we want to have like some nice robot arms because the world of Satisfactory is so much about factories, so much about buildings, so much about cold machines. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of um, a little bit of personality, and also Satisfactory has a lot of, I mean, more. It it's it has a lot of goofy stuff going on here and there. Overall, it's an engineering game, but uh, we like to throw in a little personality and humor every once in a while. Without yeah, I think there's like one example is the like personal minor, right? There's there's still like a lot of personality in in various places in the um, buildings. So yeah, the oh, personal thanks. minor I absolutely love, yeah. and I wish we had more of that. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. really really nice. Yeah, it's really cute, and yeah.